podcast. I'm Eliza Clark. I'm the showrunner. I'm Amber Tamblin. I play Kimberly. Um, could you talk a little bit about uh, if the choice to have diverse bodies on screen was a choice or just luckily happened? Um, so are you talking about the uh, particularly that bathing scene in, in episode six or just in general? Uh, both the bathing yeah. scene and in general the fact that all yeah. of your actors look very different and are not yeah. what you would always see on screen. Yes, um, it was definitely a choice. I mean, I uh, I really wanted to make a show that had like the visual style is kind of, for lack of a better term, the female gaze. Um, and that bathing scene in particular, like we talked a lot about how women's bodies have been photographed forever. Um, and trying to do something different and I think you know we want to see the, the sort of like full breadth of, uh, of the way people look um, while also not like making it titillating or sexual um, so that scene I'm very proud of that scene and how that that we work together to you know with the actors with the background actors with the director and the DP everybody there was a woman um, it was great yeah so and we also have the scene uh, the Spanx you with the Spanx Yes. That's all her. That was me. It's like, I like the idea of Kimberly like wiggling into things, waddling around. That's sort of her je ne sais quoi. <laughs> I love, I mean, the shooting of that, we were all so, that was amazing. Yeah. I, Amber was like. I am the comedic relief of the show. You're Kimberly just is the great. Monstrous comedic relief. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I have a question about like the overall uh, concept of this series and what was it about it that was so in interesting to you to like mm -hmm. actually show run and bring this to life? Well, I mean, what I love about the book is that it's about identity and it's sort of about um, taking uh, these specific characters who are so, you know, their, their relationships and their friendships and it has kind of a, yes, there's darkness and violence and whatever, but it's also, I think, kind of optimistic um, and as far as ap apocalyptic stories go. Um, I, at the point in time where this project became available to me, like I was really, I wanted, I had been writing for Animal Kingdom um, and running that show, which I loved, but it was like entirely about men um, and about like bank robbing and violence and like guns. Um, and I really wanted to write about uh, identity and its intersections. So I'm just very interested in the ways that systems of oppression inform our identity and how you know, even though half the world dies, doesn't mean white supremacy dies, doesn't mean patriarchy dies, doesn't mean capitalism dies, and like yes. the ways that white women uphold white supremacy, the ways that women in general uphold patriarchy was all incredibly interesting to me in this like Trump time when I was feeling super depressed. <laughs> and, and I want to commend you yeah. on that because I feel like it's very honest with yes. that. Like, a lot of people would, I know we, we joke like, if all the men were gone, it'd be a better world, but <laughs> yeah. nothing really changed, you know, and, and I, I wanted to commend you guys Thank for that. Thank you. It's very honest. I love that. Thank you. So, I, you know, I know you couldn't imagine that you were going to end up having to do this film during the pandemic, mm -hmm. but how did you, and, 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 and this is really a joke, but how did you create the illusion to make this project? look like yeah. it absolutely wasn't yeah. it is yeah. fantastic i mean you can identify a pandemic film yeah. or show but how did you what what were some of your tactics in order to really make this world feel really wholesome uh well we um had an incredible crew yeah. we had really strict covid protocols and we use a lot of vfx that are really well done yeah so when you're outside like the that white house riot that you see in episode two i mean before the pandemic i wanted wanted to make, like part of what we talked about with our directors and our DPs, Kira Kelly and Catherine Lutz, was the idea of like the female gaze being subjectivity and being inside of the experience so that you wouldn't get big scopey shots unless <laughs> it was important. Um, and so I think that actually helped us. And that was what we were going to do before the pandemic. But like that White House riot, I think, had nine people. Um, performing that or um, when you're outside of the Pentagon and there's thousands of people there's a lot of magic happening. Yes. <laughs> we shot it during like the huge lockdown that was in Toronto and in Canada when they had their big wave in the yeah. beginning of this year so I mean I think for actors too it was really fascinating because we were all very depressed yeah. couldn't leave Canada couldn't see family members you know it was really really hard and it's one of the reasons that we're all like family. We're very, very close because we 
were there together and we got close in that way, but we also like the, the sadness and the loneliness that you, the desperation you see in the characters was, was present in the real life situation we were in. We also had fun though. We did have fun. We learned we a lot danced, of choreographed dances. We danced. We, we did, did a lot of... We all keep each other, you know, sane and then healthy mentally. We, uh, we formed a little we pod. Danced. We did a lot of drinking, which I don't know if that made us healthier, we but did. we definitely... Uh, Ash I'm Ashley and I would go sit on a bench in yeah. uh, the park in Toronto, and we would just bring like a bottle of rosé in a bag. And just eat it's it now. That's like what we would do. We also uh, had a, a dance troupe. We, uh, we, we, we learned did. four choreographed dances. We did. Um, and so, yeah, that's one of the things. We, we really became... I mean, our kids, there were four children. Missy Pyle's daughter and, and Amber's daughter and my kids formed a little pod it was like we really yeah. we it's very sad not to be shooting the show right now I know because I feel very <laughs> far away from my my peeps yeah that's how I feel yeah. agreed so I have to commend you on adapting this story and looking past you know the Y chromosome mm -hmm. as man and mm -hmm. really opening up the playing field how important was it to bring the Sam character uh, to the screen the way you were I mean when I I loved this book and when it became available to me, I was like, oh, I want to do this so badly. But I also was nervous. I, I felt like there's no part of me that wanted to put something into the world that equated, you know, uh, chromosomes with gender. They're very different things. Um, and so it was, it was central to my adaptation to add Sam, but also to add all the other trans characters that we see. And I think it was, you know, that's important, but it was also really important to have the scene with Diana Bang's character, Dr. Mann who can speak to the science of it because I actually find it I mean yes identity is so complicated and rich and diverse that's really interesting but it's also the science and chromosomes are also like way more complicated than the you know the, I think the show is in many ways about binary thinking and escaping from that so you know we have characters like Kimberly who's like fully aligned with this idea of the patriarchy and her power comes from her proximity to men um, and you know she's gonna go on a journey <laughs> yeah That's to say the least yeah it's gonna get wild Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. And thank you for showing diverse lives. Thank you. I, you know, I talked to some of the some of the girls who were in that scene who were like, "It's so important to see us on yeah. screen." And I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> I feel that way too. I don't ever see anybody that looks like yeah. me on screen." Yeah. Uh, I think